Okay, we're going to get started here for the Advanced 2000 Cloud University Telephony and Integrated Communications webinar. Thank you for attending today. All right, today we're going to be talking about a few things. First, I want to give some introduction to Advanced 2000 as well as myself, Chris France. We want to talk about why do I need a new phone system or why do I need to communicate? How can I communicate differently? What's the problem we're trying to solve? Then I want to get into the IP telephony components. There's a lot of uh, parts and pieces of a telephone system and I'll compare some of the new technologies to the previous technologies that many of us are using. We'll talk about some of the solutions using these new technologies, the, the associated costs, and then we'll wrap up with an executive summary and take a few questions. All right, let's get started. First, Advanced 2000, Industry Solutions. Who is Advanced 2000 and what do we do? Well, first and foremost, we are an IT engineering firm. We've been around for about 20 years, and we provide a full service IT um, technology services, cloud computing, business continuity, help desk, integrated telephony communications, what I'm talking about today, as well as uh, high-level IT strategy and audit, audit all the way down to maintenance and middleware software development services. We serve many uh, industries as well. The AEC, which stands for Architects, Engineers, and Construction, the healthcare industry, government, education, legal, um, the professional services firms will fall into that, CPA firms, etc., as well as manufacturing. My name is Chris France, and this is a short biography on me. I am the president of Advanced 2000 North Carolina, also known as a cloud CIO. I perform that role for many of our clients. I've been on NIT for about 25 years, and 11 of those years uh, have been I've been CIO. I worked at IBM, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and Little, which is a large architectural and engineering firm. I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, but we travel all over the place for our clients. I've written several articles, a contributing author to a book on cloud computing, as well as all kinds of technology conference speaker, webinars, and so forth, uh, when I'm not doing my CIO cloud duties. Why do I need a new phone system? Or why? Why do I need to communicate, or how can I communicate dip differently? Uh, a lot of our clients come to us with different reasons. First and foremost is my old phone system is dying. I still need to be able to talk to my customers and my clients, and my phone system's on its last legs. It may be 10, 15 years old. I've seen some phone systems approaching 20 years old, hanging on with you know duct tape and Band-Aids. The uh, current vendor pricing is too high. There's been some mergers, acquisition. You've got the Nortel Avaya. There's maintenance ongoing, and a lot of people say, look, you know, why am I paying so much money for this? Is there a better way to, to acquire the, the technology that, that I need to communicate for, for less money? And that's kind of what I want to talk about today. Yes, there is. It's hard to manage. I don't know if you've ever used any of these high-end phone systems, <coughs> but the, the skill sets to, to manage them are very hard to acquire. You've got a lot of training. It's almost like you've got to go to phone university and get a Ph.D., and so you end up having to hire a, a maintenance provider and so forth. And then that's, that's just the existing um, phone systems, being able to talk to a human. Now there's all kinds of new innovations out, such as integrated messaging, instant messaging, video, directory integration, and so forth. And I'll be getting into what some of those are later in the presentation. And then there's ways, you know, there's new ways to communicate. You know, traditionally, We've had the the person-to-person -person or human-to-human -human communication. I need to call somebody. I pick up the phone and call them. Well, now there's there's it's possible to, for a, a person to talk to a computer. If you've ever entered one of those automatic call attendants and hit a button and so forth, they're talking to you and you can speak your answers. That's human-to-computer integration, as well as computer-to-computer -computer integration, and new ways and new workflows of providing services to your customers. So people are looking at their phone system, not just as a phone system, but as a new way to communicate. And there's different ways to communicate in real time other than just a telephone. All right, let's start talking about some of the components. Because well, at the end of the day, these, 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 this functionality is, is not free and it is not easy to set up. 
And I want to kind of go through each of these because my, I will call it modern cloud computing technology is changing the thinking and the IT best practices in all of these areas. On the left here, I'll call it old school, which is typically, you know, everything starts with IT labor. This stuff doesn't build itself. It doesn't keep running by itself. I, I use the analogy of a spinning top. You know, IT guys keep the top spinning, and if the IT guys aren't there, the top stop, you know, stops spinning and falls over. And so you always need somebody to, 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 to keep this running. You've got the handsets kind of going up from the end user all the way up. You've got the handsets. You pick up a phone, you dial, so forth. We all know what a handset is. You've got a cable, cabling. How does the handset get to the PBX? It's, you know, old school was cat, cat three wiring, twisted pair, going down punch down blocks, and then over, you know, jumping over to your PBX. And that's the next thing. Uh, PBX is private, stands for private branch exchange. And it's basically the phone company functionality moved into your office. The call hold, routing, conference bridging, forwarding, camp on, all that kind of uh, features that you need. And it's been typically, it's been a, a digital or a TDM, uh, time duplex, duplex multiplexing. Um, the, uh, and then the trunks. The trunks are how your phone numbers actually get to your PBX. So they're usually coming in from the phone company, the TW Telecoms, the AT&Ts, and so forth. So that's kind of the old way that we used to do phones. Now on the right, we'll talk about how the new way, some of these new components, and I'm going to step through each one of them and talk specifically about it. We still have the IT labor. This is actually getting more complex, and so you need more IT skills to keep all this stuff spinning the top. You still have handsets, but now we have different kinds of handsets. We've got handsets that not only sit on your desk, but now that are mobile. They're your smartphones and, and wireless phones and cordless phones and soft phones, and we'll get into some of that. So you've got different ways of, of communicating. And then you have the cabling. Uh, most of the, the modern phone systems, IP phone systems, will not run on Cat3. Uh, there is one exception, and I'll talk about that, but most of them are Cat5e and better. So many times before a firm can, can move into this new technology, they'll have to recable their, uh, their offices. And then now we're not plugging right into a punch-down block. We're plugging into switches. These are data switches that you normally would have your computers plugged into. And you need a certain level of switch to be able to do phones in, in addition to your, your computer data. And then you have uh, another uh, concept of circuits. Now, this is different than trunks in that circuits will connect maybe one of your offices to another office. So this allows you to centralize your PBX so you don't have to have PBXs in all of your offices. So it's a, it's a way to get back kind of the, to the mothership. And then you actually have the PBX. You still have the modern you know, IP uh, PBXs uh, that's got to live somewhere. And then you still need your trunks. You still have to get your phone numbers from the phone company, uh, your DIDs, direct inward dials. And that will come in in a variety of fashions. And that's changing. And then you have now you have applications. Before I couldn't run applications on my handsets, these handsets are becoming, I'll call them mini computers. And there's a lot of things you can do with these, uh, this communication system. And that all kind of tears up to new communication workflows. How can I create a communication process that can quickly and accurately get the information to where it needs to go in the most efficient manner? There's more ways, more options that we have at our disposal to make that possible. All right, first let me start with the IT labor, as I mentioned, you know, kind of going up this, this stack. Well, first, somebody has to choose, design, install, train, and maintain the system. And that relies on people. So you've got to have the right skill set. You know, we at Advanced 2000, we look at this problem and, and kind of holistically, our goal is to minimize the IT labor, particularly the ongoing operational expense. Sure, a lot of these phone systems you know, they cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy. But the ongoing operational, by the time you talk of labor, maintenance, and so forth, usually ends up being far greater than that acquisition cost. And so we want to kind of look at the total cost of ownership. Modern communications are very complex. It requires much ongoing training to acquire the skills and to fix the problems. And now we need 24 by 7 communications. You know, this stuff's got to be working all the time. I've gotten calls where the phones are down at 2 o'clock in the morning. It's like, well, who's calling then? And, and generally, when you have that kind of requirement, you, you don't have just one person 
uh, manning the phones uh, system because they've got to sleep and uh, or go on vacation or whatever. So you need a team of people to keep your communications online 24/7. And while this last point, I didn't want to, it's, it's labor related, not not necessarily IT related. But we've seen some of our clients starting to rethink uh, the receptionist. Um, when you have a person at each location, that's fine if you need them for greeting guests and so forth. But many have found that by centralizing their PBX in the receptionist pool, they can actually have fewer receptionists covering, covering a larger number of offices because phone up, phones can ring in different locations and so forth. So there's just different things that you can do. You've got more options to you as you look at modernizing your communication system. The next component is a handset. Gone are the analog and digital handsets you know, that are sitting on your desk today. They don't work with a new system. So generally, you will have to buy new handsets. The current standard or best practice is a SIP or an IP uh, handset. SIP stands for Session, Session Initiation Protocol. It's more of an internet standard for telephony. They're traditional looking. Here down at the bottom, you'll see this is a typical deployed Alcatel Lucent phone that, that we use. It looks like a, a normal handset, but it's an IP-based phone. They have different uh, flavors of all of these these handsets of 100 meg connection, 1,000 uh, meg or gig connection uh, that are PC interfaces. And I'll talk about this one, cabling. The uh, Many times you have one cable going to your office now. You don't need two, one for the phone and one for your computer. You have one cable going to your phone and then a little whip coming off that phone to plug into your laptop or workstation, whatever. We have more, we have more options than just the hard, uh, hard handsets. We've got soft phones, which is basically a software phone. And you can see a, a picture of it here, which basically runs on your computer and allows you to make calls through your you know, address book or punch in the number and so forth. I just want to make a, com a comment on this. I, 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 a lot of people use these, and I use them. I've, I've used them before. But I'm leery to hear some people say that they're going to replace all of their hard phones with soft phones. And I envision the day where, say, everybody in the office has a laptop with their soft phone on it and somebody keels over, has a heart attack or whatever, and you need to make an emergency 911 call, and either the laptops are out and the people are out of the office, or their computer screens are locked, and you can't find a phone. Yeah, you might have your cell phone and so forth. But I, I like the handsets. I like to be able to walk up and use it and not be totally dependent on a, on a Microsoft laptop or so forth. So that's just, just one thing when you, when you look at the uses, the business uses of your communication that you have to take into account. And then there's other handsets. You've got your smartphone, cellular, you've got your wireless uh, IP phones. All of these have different uh, solutions, and people want to be able to use the handset that works best for them in any given situation. And it may change, depending on how your situation changed, but the communication system behind that is the same and all integrated. That's kind of the vision. Cabling, I started talking about this. You know, most firms, for their phone systems anyhow, have the Cat 3 twisted pair. And only Alcatel Lucent that I'm aware of can use uh, the Cat3. Now, you've got to buy special equipment they have to convert the, the signal to be able to run high bandwidth type applications over Cat3 twisted pairs, but they do have that technology as a communications company. In fact, I believe they, um, they use that for the AT&T U-verse uh, uh, product from AT&T is built on type of this technology. But most of the other systems are more computer system based, and they need a Cat3. Cat 5e or better uh, cabling infrastructure, which generally, uh, you know, a cabling job is is not trivial for an entire office. So that's something to, to keep in mind before you embark on a new communication system. Like I said before, you you don't have to run two cables to an office. Many firms have done this and basically doubled their cabling cost. Now you can half it and just bring one to the handset, plug it in, and you know the, the PC would plug into the phone. Most of my clients, I recommend buying the, the gigabit handset because many firms have gigabit switches and they like gigabit to the desktop. And if you had a 100 meg phone, that would be the bottleneck on a gigabit network. So you want to stick with the gigabit phone if you have a gigabit network. And of course, you still have this, the uh, Ethernet limitations, 300, meetings, 300 meters distance limit, and you might need to install fiber if you've got longer runs than that 
to be able to handle those distances. But this goes back into a good cable plant design to prepare you for our new communication systems. And now, and, and we actually can communicate over wireless inside of a building, and the wireless technologies are getting better and better. They're getting enterprise grade. And one day, we may not have any cables in the office. I never would have thought that possible, but now with cloud computing, I can run desktops over a wireless network. I can run phones over a wireless network. And if someone really wanted to save all the money on cabling, it's, it's quite possibly to do that with wireless nowadays. But by far, most firms are still you know, cabling their offices. Switches, another consideration that you have to make as you go through your phone uh, or communication system purchasing. Now, I do want to make a point here that throughout this presentation, this is, this is very much educational. Sure, Advanced 2000 has as products, but you can apply these concepts to any vendor solution. I don't care, and we'll talk a little bit about that. And this is uh, just for things for you to remember as you're upgrading. Think about your switches. You know, the old system, we had a home run uh, to the punch down, which means all the way from my handset back to the closet, punch down blocks. Now, with a new phone system, I need to plug in that cable into a shared POE or power over Ethernet switch. And that will give you the same functionality of not having to plug AC adapters into your phones. And many times if you have your closets on generator and, and your PBX on generator, your phones would still work even if in, in a power outage. Most, most people need to upgrade their switches um, to be able to do this. I recommend buying switches with POE nowadays. It's not that much more to add the power over Ethernet functionality. But if you just bought a bunch of new switches, no, there's no need to throw them out and buy new switches. They have what they call power injectors, which will allow us to uh, inject power onto the line of an existing non-POE switch. So there's a solution for pretty much any type of problem out there. As I mentioned, the 1,000 meg or the gig switches, the POE are the most common. Layer 2 and Layer 3 eliminates the expensive routers. So I, I want to make a point about this because it's, it's, I'm going to make it more once we get into the, the circuit. But our WAN connectivity is starting to look more like a LAN. So if I have five or six offices all across the country, traditional thought in IT is to have a router in each location and some kind of a circuit, maybe a private circuit, maybe an Internet circuit. And that's how I connected my offices. Well, now, if I have all my data centralized and my PBX centralized into a data center, I can get in, I can get these, these uh, very cost-effective Metro Ethernet point-to-point uh, -point circuits where I'm connecting just, it's just a, a layer two or a layer three connection from one location to the other. I, I don't need a router. It's just a switch. It's just kind of like uh, if you have switches in your closet, Daisy chaining one switch to another, you have a cable going from one to the other. That's the same way we do it over a WAN now. You don't need an expensive uh, Cisco router. And this is just an example of some various types of switches that are available all the way from the low end, layer two, 6400, 6200 switches, to some me medium term gig switches, layer three, 6850s and so forth, and then to the high end core switches, 9000 or the 10, or the, you know, the 10 gig switches that are coming out. But your switch infrastructure needs to be looked at. I'm kind of going to, I'm building this up from the ground up as you consider the new system. Circuits, start talking about this a little bit. This is where things are starting to get interesting compared to the way we used to do it. In the, in the old days, we, we used to have to have a distributed PBX infrastructure. So if I had six offices, I had six PBXs. And each of those offices had a T1 trunk going into it. And so now, that was kind of, I would say, this fully, fully connected or fully meshed network. This, was, this would be what a, an MPLS network looks like. So like I said, if I had six offices, I would have six PBXs. And then each one of these offices would have you know, one or more, depending on the number of people at that location, um, T1s. You know, it's not uncommon to see firms with six, seven, 10, 12 you know, T1s providing voice service to their to their firm. Well now, this, this MPLS with this new cloud technology, this MPLS network is getting replaced with point-to-point -point Metro Ethernet circuits. So look at this, I, I've, I've priced 50 meg Metro Ethernet circuits and they're ranging 
between 500 and 1,000 bucks a month, depending on where you're at in the country. And, and that's almost close to the price of some T1s. You might be able to get T1s for around 300 bucks, but most of them range from three to 500 a month. And so you've got these, say these, these six offices that we had before, one of them would be the headquarters or where the data center is located. And you would put in a uh, circuit, a direct circuit to all of the, from all the offices to the, the data center. The PBX would sit here in the middle. And then all of these firms or all these offices would not need their own PBX. There would be one PBX and all the offices would be able to, to use it. This is centralizing your PBX via the new modern circuits. And I'll talk about trunks here in a minute. Now, the PBX, like I said, you know, the normal school of thought was it was decentralized. That's, that's being replaced by a centralized PBX. Why do I need six PBXs all scattered all over the place if I can have one to run my entire firm? That's what firms are starting to reconsider. And then you got to consider, do I want a hardware or a software PBX? I wouldn't rule out Microsoft, and they're, they're touting a software PBX to run on any type of you know, Windows-based hardware. But I'm still leery about running real-time communications for the entire firm on a Windows operating system. I'll, I'll never say never, and, and it may work someday, uh, and, and, and I'll change my mind. But right now, I like the mix of hardware and software. And you'll see the, the Cisco, the Avaya, the Shortel, the Alcatel Lucent. All of them have a hybrid solution where they, they have dedicated hardware as well as software to run on, the, uh, on this hardware. And the software could be proprietary. It could be Linux-based. It could be just system software at the, at the low-level firmware or BIOS level all the way up to end-user application programs, call managers, and so forth running on this. They're all similar, but yet they all kind of do things in their own way. And these PBXs have thousands of features and limitations. So it's good to stick with somebody that knows communications because you still want to be able to communicate the old-fashioned way. Who cares if you get this new integrated communication system and the CEO still can't make a phone call to whomever, you know, that kind of thing. So you want to make sure that you build on the features that you really need. But I'd also challenge your, challenge your thinking to say, all right, I used to do it this way. Is there a better way to achieve this same kind of thing? So all of those business workflows need to be looked at as well as, as you decide to, to pick a new PBX. And then I, and I tell you know, business owners, do you buy one PBX or do you buy 10? Which one do you think is going to cost more? 10 PBXs usually cost more than the one. So that's something that you really want to consider as you deploy a new system. Can I live with one, or do I really need to distribute this PBX for DR or whatever reasons? And these are just a, uh, some of the Alcatel Lucent various PBX offerings, all the way from the, the, the PCX Office to the PCX Enterprise to the new OpenTouch, which is more graphical application-based PBX, to the um, some of the common uh, media gateways to get to the other older you know technologies, the TDM that I mentioned, and so forth. All right, now let's talk about the trunks. Now, this is how you get your phone numbers to your offices, or the DIDs, the direct inward dials to the PBX. This is changing, too. In the old days, we used to have a T1 in each office. I'm using the same network diagram. Like I said, you'd have at least one T1, maybe more, into each one of these offices, depending on the capacity you need. Well, now, if I've, if I've got this, this centralized PBX, like I said before, I've got the PBX in the center. I've got circuits to all of the offices. The offices don't have a PBX, but the, the, the main data center does. Well, how do I get my phone numbers to all these offices that may have all different area codes and so forth? Well, the answer is SIP. SIP is a new technology. You'd have the carrier deliver a SIP circuit into your data center and hook directly to your PBX. Now, this SIP provider, it can actually, it's, it's basically like providing network dial tone or dial tone over the Internet kind of thing. And... You can take, actually, they can aggregate the phone numbers or the area codes for the entire country, the U.S., and I believe Canada now as well is, is relatively new, and route all of those DIDs and phone calls into one location, and then they'll go out over your private network to the, to the local. So if you have, say, a Seattle office and 
the PBX is in Dallas, Texas, you make a local phone call to a, uh, a pizza shop from your office kind of thing, and it actually goes goes across the network to your Dallas PBX, out the SIP circuit in Dallas to the provider, out over the provider's network to that local Seattle pizza, pizza place, and then back to you. And so that's one circuit going into the data center for six offices as opposed to six to ten circuits, T1s, going into all of your offices. So it's instead of distributing your circuits and your DID, you're centralizing your circuit delivery as well. Way to save money, provide more DR and so forth, uh, disaster recovery. Think about it. Most, most firms may have their headquarters data center on generator, but all of their regional offices are not on generator. But with their PBX and their SIP circuit and all that equipment on generator, the entire firm benefits from a generator on their PBX. New way to do trunks. It's very different. And, I'll, and I also want to make a note, um, because it is relatively new, it is, it is proven, but not all PBXs are certified to carriers, all, all carrier SIP service. You know, like I know from personal experience, TW Telecom, for a time, they may have more right now, but the last time I checked, they were only certified to the Cisco call manager for SIP service. Uh, level 3 can certify to many different uh, carriers, um, Nortel, Via, Alcatel, Lucent, and so forth, which is who we use. We use Level 3 SIP, SIP provider for our, um, our service and so forth. So it's just important to, to know where you're getting your SIP and know what kind of equipment or software you're plugging it into to make sure that it's compatible and will work. All right, next, kind of going up in this new communications paradigm is applications. And so really you hear about unified messaging or integrated communications. All that means is all the different ways of communicating in real time, either with a computer or a human, they're all kind of integrated together. Because one day I might want to use the phone, another day I might want to use my computer, another day I might want to use my, my smartphone or whatever. And that's really what they're we're talking about. I see a lot of people now are using their PBX system to generate, to tie it. The first thing that usually gets done is tie it to your email system so that when somebody leaves you a voice message, it actually shows up in your inbox as a WAV file. And you can listen to it, either on your computer or it will show up on your smartphone or whatever. People love this functionality because if they get a, an approval from a client to do something and it's on a voicemail, they can actually take that voicemail and save it with a project and have a record of that, that approval kind of thing. And the uh, smartphones, it'll... it'll you know, I don't even check my voicemail from my handset anymore. I get it all on my my smartphone and I listen to it that way as I'm as I'm moving around. Conference bridging, a lot of people spend a lot of money with conference bridging services. A new communication system may have enough of that functionality built into it that you don't have to pay, so another way to offset some costs. Instant messaging is another popular way of communicating. You know, kids used to do up do it on Facebook, you know, or used to be AOL or Skype is the big thing now, but it lets somebody, if you're sitting at your computer, to see somebody pop online and instantly send them a question or, or get an answer or whatever. Uh, very, very powerful. Presence basically is saying that, you know, are you here and where are you at or what are you doing? If you log into your computer and you have presence enabled, you know, maybe the, the, the admin or the receptionist can look at it and say, oh, so-and-so's in this state or so-and-so's in that state or they're in a meeting or whatever and they're busy or they're free or and, and a lot of people use it to uh, quickly find somebody, an expert or whatever, to get their problem solved. Video is another big thing. Video conferencing at a conference room level, video conferencing at a desk, desktop level. All of these are ways to communicate that you'd like to be able to kind of integrate them. Maybe I'm talking to somebody on the phone, but I'm on video. Maybe three of us are on video, one's on phone. There's just different ways of communicating and collaborating is a, is a big word nowadays to be able to do all this. And also, many of these uh, these platforms have custom applications, custom communications um, applications. You can either buy or they give you a developer's toolkit and you can do you know develop your own uh, workflow or stream or whatever. And then the next level, you know, we've been talking a lot about, you know, communicating inside your company. But many, many people want to 
communicate outside their company at a much higher level with their suppliers, their clients. You know, of course, now you can certainly pick up the phone and call your client or your supplier, but people want to do instant messaging with their suppliers, maybe do video conferencing, see presence. All these kinds of things are coming in play to not only transcend your internal network, but to federate or to create a secure connection to another entity that's not your firm to be able to communicate. So there's just a lot of things you can do now, and a lot of thought needs to be given to this, because I'll tell you, I've used a lot of these things, and depending if you're, if you're not, um, let's just say strategic on how you deploy these things, they could be tremendous time wasters and interrupters, and you might not want people being able to pop things pop up on their screen willy-nilly because they're focused on doing something else. So it's just something very, uh, very much has to be looked at as you look at how this technology will change uh, your business. Communication workflows. This is kind of the holy grail, if you will, of where we're going. You know, in the old days, we used to pick up the phone, a human calls a human, we, we talk, we hang up. That was pretty much it. Well, with these new workflows, we can certainly still do the human-to-human -human communication, but now we've got this computer-to-human interaction, as well as human-to-computer, as well as computer-to-computer. -computer. And you'll, we're seeing things pop up like that use these type of workflows, like Safe Campus, you know, whether you have one of these, you know, Virginia Tech, you know, scares where you have a gunman, you want to be able to quickly get the information out to all of the, the students will be a text messaging or whatever device they have on their person, laptops, MacBooks, whatever. You've got E911, there's all kinds of first responders that need to communicate with computer systems and handheld walkie-talkies and so forth. You've got the healthcare professionals. Uh, when, when you do a code blue, somebody's you know having a heart attack and you need to communicate to the right people. Nurse call systems, call centers. There's just all of these ways to use this communication technology that is new and can provide your business with a competitive advantage. A lot of these functionalities have been around for a while, but 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 only the very biggest companies, the largest firms, can can deploy these things because they were very expensive. But what's happening now is all of these capabilities are coming down in price. So even the small and medium-sized businesses can afford some level of these um, communications abilities, and it's really changing the way they work. All right, what are some of these solutions? I want to pull up a couple reports. I forgot to do that. Hold on a second here. I'm going to pull up some reports here of the, um, one second, Cloud. it was the um, Aberdeen Report Communications. Well, I can't find it right now. We'll come back to that. I'll look for that. The um, you can find these things on the um, on the internet. I did a couple searches from Gartner and and so forth, and you can you can pull these down. There was a January study of Aberdeen Group uh, total cost of ownership benchmarking for a unified communication study. Now I looked at this. That was a short tail download. It it looked like it it put Shortel in a very favorable light, and, and it's good. Shortel's a good system. It looked at Cisco, Avaya, Shortel, Microsoft. It did not look at Alcatel-Lucent, but I wanted to add that in there. If you haven't looked at Alcatel-Lucent, you need to. I never heard of them before, but what happens is, is they, they're actually the carrier's carrier. AT&T, Verizon, they're, they're big in Europe. Alcatel bought Lucent. They do not do a lot of marketing. They are, they've got a multi-billion dollar business, and they've been primarily marketing to carriers where they didn't have to do a whole lot of work. They just keep getting a lot of repeat business. And only in, I'd say, probably in the last, you know, maybe 10 years, they started to sell their equipment to the uh, enterprise. So any firm could buy this. They just didn't do a whole lot of marketing to that. But they are a very good engineering company, and they've got very good stuff, used to you know, providing five nines, six nines availability on their on their hardware, so they know communications, and that's really why we selected them. They've got a huge suite of of applications, communications applications, microwave, all kinds of things that you would never satellite that you would 
never probably typically typically used for a business, but they've got a good integrated plan. They also lend themselves well to a hosted environment. If you decide to centralize and host your um, your PBX in one location, all these vendors are not the same. The last I checked, Shortel would not let would not support that type of deployment. They want a, dis a distributed model. The other ones would, and at the same time. Uh, we being a service provider, we wanted a multi-tenant environment. So a lot of these PBXs will provide, you know, up to 10,000, you know, extensions. Well, most businesses don't have one location with 10,000 people. But what if we deploy, we as a service provider deployed this technology and carved up that 10,000, you know, PB, you know, handset PBX to, you know, 50, 50 users here for this business on, hundred users there for that business and so forth. That provides a much better um, computing environment or a communicating environment for much less cost. So that's really where this this TCO study, I, I looked at it and you guys can download it, but it has all kinds of things to consider, but they did not consider everything that I list here on the right. They left off like trunks and circuits, which are a huge cost, uh, operational cost to your uh, communication system. All right, let's see if you can get some numbers here. This is uh, some Alcatel Lucent, as I mentioned. This is another uh, Numerities uh, report for, um, we'll call it challengers, they call Unified Communications All ven Vendors. They got market challengers and market leaders. You've got the Microsofts and the Cisco's as the market leaders. Uh, and you've got the, um, the, the Alcatel Lucent was the leading challenger. So you, know, you can take these, these reports with a grain of salt but know that Alcatel Lucent is a very competitive product, and uh, we've we've been a, a, a reseller of that that equipment for you know ten years, and it's done very well for our clients. The uh, many people don't know this, but you know, if you're running Shortel now, the their unified communications platform, their their computer based um, you know instant messaging and all that is actually the My Teamwork, which is uh, was which was built by Alcatel Lucent. They they OEM it from Alcatel Lucent. As I said before, Verizon and AT&T under the cover, the Verizon 4G network, the AT&T U-verse, a few other things are all using Alcatel Lucent equipment under the covers. So we figured if, if it's good enough for the big boys, it's good enough for us and, and our clients. That's why we've we've uh, standardized on uh, Alcatel Lucent. As I mentioned, they're an engineering company, not so good a marketing company. And their communication portfolio is, is pretty much everything that you would need. All the various handsets speakerphones, smartphones, PCs, all the various PBXs, gateways, applications, management, unified communication, visual, and so forth. Very similar to many of the other ones. Let's talk about some of the costs now. And we'll be wrapping up here shortly. You know, most firms, uh, buying a new communication system is, is, is not easy and it's not trivial and, and they don't want to do this very often. It's not uncommon for firms to, to keep a a phone system or a communication system for 10 years or longer. And the uh, the recurring costs, as I mentioned, will far outweigh the capital costs. The short tail was the lowest cost customer owned solution, but it's still distributed, as I mentioned. See that? You can see that Aberdeen report. The Advanced 2000 hosted communications was the lowest cost solution with more options than all of the vendors, which is, now, which is based on the Alcatel Lucan product suite, and there's no capital outlay with a hosted type environment, and I'll kind of get into that. Here's here's uh, some real numbers to, to consider. Now, your numbers, your mileage will vary um, depending on how large you are or how small, but we've got our, our smallest cloud customer that I'm aware of that has their PBX in the cloud, so to speak, is a three-person office, and they're paying about 30 bucks a month for their phone service and it's all built on their existing SIP service and so, um, circuit and so forth. But if you take the Aberdeen numbers, you'll figure a 30 to 60% less using a hosted strategy. Because Aberdeen is still um, touting a more of a distributed model. And so here, here's an example. Uh, this was actually one of our clients. It was a very large deployment, 7,300 phones. If I did a traditional uh, PBX deployment, communications deployment like uh, like the Aberdeen report would have had us do in a distributed mode, that would have cost them approximately $3.6 over three years. This is a three-year pricing. 
and the uh, the private basically if I wanted to kind of host this myself in a private data center in one location basically getting that that centralization and economies of scale then I'd save about a third of that 3.6 million or about 2.6 million and then the ultimate way to get this the same functionality for less money is to have a hosted private or a multi-tenant system which is the advanced 2000 uh, cloud service for the PBX right here. It's about a million bucks, or you know, almost a you know, sixty percent, you know, two thirds less. You know, it's a third of the cost to be able to provide this. And, and how do we do that? Well, like I said, we replace the T1s with the SIP service. The SIP service we have is not just for one company. It's a very fat pipe that we can share between all of our clients. So you're getting some sharing going on. And that's that. You know, I've had I've had clients that savings alone practically paid for their new communication system. So if you're particularly if you have a very distributed footprint, you've got six, seven, ten offices. Shutting off ten T ones will more than pay for this phone system. And so that's something to consider. Leveraging your cloud IT PBX staff. You don't have all these trucks, these white trucks that travel to your office. You know, in a distributed model, keeping all these PBXs running requires technicians to come out on site and replace parts, do maintenance, backups, whatever. Well, if the PBX is in a centralized location being managed for a lot of clients, then a small team of, of, of VoIP engineers can keep a lot of people running for very, very little time. Another way we save money. Like I said, we run over one Metro Ethernet circuit. Uh, there's other hosted VoIP providers that can't do that. You know, you have Cypress Communications and, or uh, I think it's Broadsoft that, that provide these hosted phone solutions. But all of them want to put in a new circuit into your office. Many times a T1 or multiple T1s, which is kind of defeating the purpose. The real advantage is if you have all your IT, your servers and your desktops and your storage in one data center, and accessing it over one circuit, why wouldn't you have your PBX in the same location accessing it over the same circuit? So that's one thing that those guys can't do because they're not taking over um, all the responsibilities for your IT shop, whereas Advanced 2000 would or could. Uh, disaster recovery, I mentioned this. Having all your PBX in one location, you can now afford to have that on generator and the power of the electricity is included. So if you're wanting a greener solution, a hosted PBX shared with many clients is a much lower carbon footprint that you have to deal with today. Like I said before, if you if you go to a centralized, you know, LAN switched environment instead of a WAN routed environment, you can you can ditch all your routers. You can get in and, and re, you know get rid of your smart net and all that. You may have one router left and it's your internet router where your firm accesses the, the internet all the uh, the rest of the con connectivity internally is done with a uh, switch. Very possible. We're doing this all the time right now. And it's less complex. There's less headaches for IT and the business owners. Think about it. Designing, building, and buying and setting up a phone system is very difficult. If we, if we already have it designed, built, and set up and running, we're really just adding users to an existing phone system. That's really the, uh, the savings that you have to your business. You're more agile. You can get things going up and uh, running quickly. And that we're about, run we're about running out of time here. As an executive summary, we'll have a, you know, basically what we're talking about is a multi-tenant private cloud. You know, as you look at your new communication system, everyone considers Cisco, Shortel, Avaya, Microsoft, and so forth. But I'd strongly recommend you look at Alcatel Lucent as well. Like I said, they're the carrier's carrier to your consideration. Whether you buy their equipment outright or you go with a hosted solution like I'm talking about. The most common communication um, capabilities for the buck come from advanced 2000 hosted communication. It's kind of like we have an IT high rise that's available for rent. You need a floor or two floors or an office suite. You can see here in the diagram, we've, we've got this IT building with multiple clients in the same building, each one of them, you know, buying various services. You know, today we're talking about a phone, PBX communication services. You know, we've also got servers and desktops and applications and storage and so forth. 
And all of this stuff is very complex. It's very hard to run, but we have shared services. Just like you would be in a high rise, you have the amenities in the common space. Uh, the IT labor is shared across all customers. You have the internet circuits, virtual services shared across customers. And, and, and as I've already said, the data center, the power, the HVAC, the phones, and the SIP circuit are all, all shared between customers to drive your cost down. And how do we begin? How do you get started? Well, you certainly, you know, give me a call. Uh, you can try the PBX Cloud. You know, that's what we're calling it, whether it's hosted voice, PBX Cloud communication, whatever you want to call it. Um, many firms have said, hey, this is a good idea. Can I, can I try it out for a little bit? Sure, give us a call. We'll work something out. Many of them have said, well, there's a lot of ways to this is going to change my business, and I don't want to blast it out to 500 people. I want to maybe do a little pilot and have 10 or so people, and let's, let's try these different communication um, applications and so forth, because I, I strongly recommend that you, you walk before you run, because we can throw out a lot of new functionality at users that they can't absorb. So you want to be able to roll out, roll it out in little chunks, and a pilot is a good way to do that. And then once your pilot's complete, you formulate your rollout plan. That's when you embrace the cloud and, and migrate in total. And we have one, two, three-year contracts and so forth. And that will get into some questions. If you haven't seen, if you have any questions, let's see. I'm going to look online and see if I've got any, any. Uh, I don't have. I've got a few here that I'll ask, and we'll go from there. With a centralized PBX, what happens if the circuit drops? That's a good question, but that's really no different than you have today if your circuit drops. You've got a T1 going into your office, your phone system's down, or you lose power, you're down. The good thing about a hosted service is that it's on generator. It, uh, a power outage won't take your phone system down. The SIP circuit is redundant. The equipment up there is redundant. So even if you lose connectivity to your office, your phone system is still up. And many times the, you know, a network outage might be 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and we've actually had this happen. A client's lost their local uh, connectivity. Now your handset won't work, but your phone system is still up and running. Clients can call you, leave messages. They just think you're not answering your phone. They'll leave a voicemail. You get the voicemail on your smartphone. And so a, a power outage or a circuit outage Whereas before it was a catastrophe uh, or a disaster, now is a minor inconvenience. And, and there's certainly, if there's still, uh, there's still ways to provide, you know, redundant local service circuits, uh, uh, remote shelves, there's still ways, I call them insurance policies, to ensure a higher level of availability even into your office. But we've got options there. Um, I think I already answered this question, but what is the difference between Advanced 2000 and other hosted voice providers like Vonage or Cypress Communications? Well, like I said, those, those, those other providers, they, they have a VoIP service, and they've got their own data center with the PBX sitting in their data center, and now you need to somehow connect to their data center. So if you're not careful, you might have a data center for your uh, firm's equipment, your IT, you might have a data center for another cloud provider like you know, Microsoft 365, and then you've got another data center for your voice. And all the voice providers will tell you they don't like running over the internet to be able to maintain a quality of service, so they've got to put in a new circuit. So you're kind of going backwards by, you're, you're saving some by having a hosted voice service, but you're spending more than you need to on your, your circuits because you still can't consolidate and run out of one location. Advanced 2000 allows you to have the best, best of both worlds, consolidate into one location as well as get a hosted shared type environment. What is the best way to implement all this technology? Well, like I said before, the, uh, you, know, you need to walk before you run. You can't just go get all new phone systems, all these new kind of communication applications on your PCs and, and so forth and expect everybody to use them effectively. You need to, it's a, it's a change management function. What I like to see is, let's take the new system, let's make sure that your cabling is upgraded, your switches are upgraded, let's put the new phone systems in place first so that they look like, just like your old ones, you know, I got my call forwarding, hold, park, et cetera, paging, and get people familiar with that, you know, maybe getting some, some basic functionality in like a voicemail in your inbox. Once you're comfortable with that, then you can start introducing, you know, video, and instant messaging, and so on and so forth. Um, 
what are some of the pitfalls of unified communications? Well, I, I've gotten, you know, some, some business owners, they say, you know, this, this is just way over the top. I don't, I don't really need all this. You know, it's kind of, it goes back to your culture and your business goals. Some firms are all over Facebook, you know, for, for social media. Other firms block it and don't want to have anything to do with it. So it really, you really have to look at, you know, how your firm wants to operate because some of these new communication protocols could be a lot like Facebook and social networking as far as how you can connect with people, how you can be interrupted. You might be in the middle of something and it kind of shoots the, your time management and scheduling, you know, down. So there's just something to, to watch for. Just like, you know, computers and technology and social media could be used for good, they can also be used for bad. And you just have to understand that. All right, well, that's all I have for today. I want to thank you all for attending the Advanced 2000 webinar, and please uh, feel free to give me a call or shoot me an email or head to our website, and we look forward to working with you. Thank you.